Hi! So in this section, we're really getting started with NumPy. We're going to work with vectors. So the key thing in this section is really just getting comfortable with vectors in NumPy. So what does this mean? This means that we should be able to, first of all, create vectors in NumPy. Secondly, do basic vector operations between different vectors. Thirdly, we should be able to understand NumPy's different data types. So NumPy has its own type of data types that you should be somewhat familiar with. Additionally, you should be able to access values in a NumPy array and also set values and perform slicing. Slicing is incredibly important in NumPy, there's a good idea to just get comfortable with it straight away. Finally, we'll also understand the differences between what's called copies and what's called views. So the three second explanation is that copies is when NumPy copies information, while views are when NumPy doesn't copy the information. We'll talk a lot more about this in the actual video. So at the end of each section we have exercise sets, and the exercise sets for this section will actually work with temperature data. And the idea is that you get to test out what you've learned in the section in the exercise set. You'll be slicing and accessing and creating and so on and so on, all to reinforce what you've learned in the lectures. So this is what we'll cover, I hope this looks interesting, and I'll see you in the next video. Hi, so in this video we're going to talk about creating vectors in NumPy and extracting values from them. So I'm here in a new Jupyter Notebook sheet, and I'm just going to start by essentially creating a NumPy array. So let's call this basic creation. And what we'll use is what's called numpy.array, like this. So first of all, of course, we need to import numpy as np, as Stine showed you previously. This works fine. And now I want to take a basic Python list and convert it into a NumPy array. So let's write our list of numbers. So this is just a made up list of numbers in Python. So let's say this is 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, and 42. The way to convert this into a NumPy array is to use the command np.array. And that command just takes in our list like this. Let's assign this to a new variable. Let's call it just array for now. So here we have the array and let's print it out. And so far it seems very, very similar to just a Python list. But you should convince yourself that it's not anymore a list by simply using the type function. This is just a Python function that lets you check the type of an object. And you can see here that the class is numpy.ndarray. So what we've effectively done is to take a Python list and convert it into a numpy array. Before going further, I just want to explain some terminology. I will interchangeably use the words vector and array and numpy array and nd array in the first couple of videos. This is because in the beginning of the course, we'll simply just create one dimensional arrays. And in this case, they're also called vectors. Later on, we'll create two dimensional structures, which are typically called matrices. And then I'll try to be a bit more careful with saying matrix or vector and so on. And the array can both refer to a two dimensional, one dimensional, or as the name suggests, an n dimensional array of vectors. Since we're just doing one dimensional stuff for now, I'll just probably use vector the most. Before doing numpy ish stuff, I just want to convince you that we can extract values and set values in numpy arrays in much the same way as with Python lists. So let's first. Extract from a NumPy array. So we can, for instance, take the first element and set that to be the array of zero. This is the precisely the same as for lists. Lists are numbered from index zero to one, two, three, four, and five. In this case, we can take array, the name of our NumPy vector, and simply just access the first element, meaning the one that has index zero. And if I now print out first element, then you can see that I indeed get the value 4. And we can do the same for, say, the last element. This is array of, I think, 5. So let's try this out. And then you can see that I get 42. You should note that for NumPy vectors, you can also use the negative indexing that is very popular in Python. So if I want to access the last element, but I don't really know how many elements there are in the array, I can simply write minus one. This does the exactly same thing. If I want the second to last one, I can do minus two and so on. So kind of side by side with extracting values is setting new values. So I can, for instance, just reach into my array, into the first element, which is at index zero, and then just set these to be equal to 100. Now, if I print the array again, you can see that indeed it has changed and now we have 100 here instead of four. 
Now this is permanently changed. So similarly, I can just go in, say, to the last value. So let's put minus one here and set that to be equal to 50. If I run this, you can see that the 50 here is changed and also the 100 is still applied. So this permanently changes my array. The summary of these two cells here is that when it comes to extracting values and setting values, it works exactly the same for arrays as it does for the typical Python lists. Before we end, I want to show you one more new function. So here, if I want to make a numpy vector, then I can do the np.array. This is convenient if I already have a list present, like here. Say I want to make a numpy array with the first 50 numbers. Then actually typing all of them out is not a good idea. And there is a special function in numpy for doing this. And this is the np a range function. So I think this stands for array range and it's very similar to range function in classical Python. So let's make a variable called sequential numbers and I'll use the np.array range function or a range and the first argument here I'll just do 17 and then for now nothing more. So if we print out sequential numbers I've made a small spelling mistake, so let me just copy this and paste it here. Yeah, and this is all the numbers starting from zero all the way up until 17, but you can see not including 17. If I pass in two numbers, say from 17 to maybe 23, then I get the numbers from 17, which is included, all the way up to 23, but that one is not included. So this works pretty much exactly the same as for the classical range function in Python, except that this here is now a vector or an array, not a Python list. Finally, you can pass a third argument indicating the step. So for instance, I can pass this to be equal to two, then I get every second number. An actual difference between the array range function here and a classical range function in Python is that this function can take in decimal numbers for steps, so I can say, 2.5. Then I get 17, 19.5, and 22. If I remember correctly, this is not possible in the usual range function in Python. This is really, really convenient, as we'll see later when we do plotting. This is it for this video. In the next video, we're going to look at basic operations between NumPy vectors and how this is really, really efficient. Thanks, and I'll see you then. Hey guys, and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about the basic operations in NumPy. So here I have an empty cell, so let me just make two vectors. So the first one I'll make with array range function. I'll take the numbers between one and five, excluding five. And the second one, I can actually use the array function. So these are essentially the two functions we looked at last time. Here I'll just manually pass in a list. Let's say the numbers are six, eight, three, two, something like this. So the first operation we can do is addition. So let's say I make a new variable called summation, like this, and then just I'll do first plus second. So let's print this out and see what has happened. So I'll make a print statement. Let me just call it sum in the first argument so it just prints out pretty nicely. Summation. And here you can see the sum. And this should be essentially what you should suspect. So just to clarify, this one here is an array with the numbers one, two, three, four. So we first have one plus six, making seven. We have two plus eight, making 10, and so on. And this works perfectly just because they're both of the same length. If I try to make this, say, slightly longer and run it, then I'll get a value error saying essentially that these operands could not be broadcast together. I'll talk a lot more about broadcasting later and show that in some cases this could actually work, but in this case it won't. So for the beginning, you should just make sure that if you add two vectors, they should be of the same length. So let's go back to both being of length four. This here really should be contrasted with typical Python lists. Let me just quickly do this. Uh, let's just make them really, really short. So this is one, two. And the second one is three, four. And if I print out list one plus list two, then I get this. The default meaning of a plus sign between Python lists is just concatenation. This means that I'll take the second list and just add it at the end of the first one, as you can see here. When it comes to vector manipulation and linear algebra and all this kind of stuff, this is very seldom what you want. It might be what you want if these represent, say, songs in a playlist. For the things we're working towards, having plus meaning list concatenations is not a good idea at all. So we definitely want to be working with the NumPy stuff. Let me just delete this. This was just for reference. So let's check out the other operations we have. We of course have subtraction, first minus second. Let's print this also out.
So this is the subtraction, as you should expect. You take 1 minus 6, that gives you minus 5, and so on. Then we have multiplication. Just the first times the second, so let's print that out. So here you can see the multiplication, so again it's 1 times 6, it's 6, 2 times 8 is 16, and so on. Then we have division. And this also works as expected, but we could say a few more things about this. First of all, you can see here that NumPy has kind of under the hood converted these into floating numbers. We'll talk a lot more about this in a future video. Secondly, you might not really want all of these decimals here. So what you could try to do is to remember, oh, but Python has a rounding function. Great, let's just do that. Round this, easy peasy, and this does not really work, to be honest. The thing here is that the rounding function doesn't work on NumPy arrays. You could do a for loop, and for each iterate in the for loop, round a number. This is a bad idea for two reasons. First of all, we don't want to write for loops that much when doing NumPy. We want to find other solutions, and this will also be talked more about later. Secondly, there should just be a function that does this, and it, of course, is, and is np dot a round, which is kind of funny. I guess it stands for array rounding, but then it just becomes a round. So I always say np around. That's just how it is. And this works great. The default here is round it to zero digits, which is probably a bit extreme. This now becomes zero. So you can, as usual, specify a second argument, same number of decimals you want. So let's say two is fine. So final one, I just want to show that this can be done. This is exponentiation. So first, and then you just use the usual exponent symbol in Python with the second. Let's print this out. And here you can see the exponentiation. So what's happening here, if I could just scroll slightly up, is that one is taken to the sixth power, that's one. Two is taken to the eighth power, that's 256 and so on. This is strictly speaking possible, but I very seldom see this being used. These are all the basic operations in NumPy. You don't need to memorize them at all because we'll be using them all over the place. So far we have a few operations. We have two ways of making new arrays by either specifying a range, say from 1 to 5, or an array. And we also have the np around function for rounding. So what we'll be doing is to gradually build up a repertoire of two things. One, a lot of methods in NumPy that's really useful, and two, a better fundamental understanding of how NumPy works. In the next video, we're going to go slightly into the second part by looking at which data types NumPy have and how they're represented. So thanks, and I'll see you in the next lecture.